So, yeah, Dean Research is here. Yeah. Hello, Professor. Hello, Vijay, can you hear me? Yeah, hello, Professor. Okay, so welcome you. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, thanks for this opportunity. So, so we welcome here uh, Dr. Vijay Anand. So Vijay, Dr. Vijay Anand, he's a pro assistant professor at civil engineering department and uh, his research work uh, 
is in the area of geochemical processing occurring at uh, mineral water interface. So he focuses, his work focuses in the area of environmental research and engineering. And today he's going to talk about crop residue burning in agricultural field. The sky is just not the limit. So we welcome you, Dr. No, and you please start your presentation. So good afternoon, everyone. Um, let me share my screen. I will. So is it fine? Yes. Yeah, is it all right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, the impact of crop residue burning in agricultural fields. Right. So whenever we hear this uh, crop residue burning, especially uh, this is a frontline news during the winter uh, in this part of the country. Right, and then we talk about air pollution. So there are impacts that are beyond air pollution that is caused due to this uh, crop burning in the agricultural fields. So that is what the focus of my talk today is going to be. So as I already mentioned, typically in, in the month of September, in this part of the country, we see uh, the brace for air pollution in Delhi as crop burning starts. And uh, the following month, there is some order from the court or from the center telling the states to take responsibility regarding the stubble burning. And eventually in November or December, we look at uh, how much percentage of this crop burning has contributed to the regional air quality pollution. Right. So this is a kind of the, the scenario that we know about. Right. And then, uh, but this is not the entire picture. Right. And then whenever the crop crop burning happens, of course, it it creates air pollution and the air quality gets severely impacted. But what happens to the char or the biochar that is left in, in the field, right? What is the impact of it? That is essentially the focus of my talk today. Okay. So uh, if you look at the crop burning practice, it is an age old practice, uh, which has got uh, even these kind of practices has happened in, uh, in the BCs actually. Uh, and, and it's been continued in the agricultural fields for a long time now. Okay, so and the major source of this black carbon in agricultural field is due to this crop crop residue burning or stubble burning as it is called. And uh, the report suggests that, and we know that India heavily relies on agriculture, especially from the northern states. And it has been estimated that amount of crop residue char that is burnt uh, uh, results in about 102 to 409 gigagrams of black carbon in the environment. Okay, so that is the, the huge amount of black carbon that is put into the soil, and that is going to actually result in affecting the sorption properties of the soil and, and whatnot. So today we'll have a look at the scenario in detail. Okay, uh, so this is a uh, picture of uh, uh, wherever the crop burning is happening, especially in the northern, northern part of the country. So in Punjab and uh, Uttar Pradesh, Haryana, etc. So the image from NASA indicates the amount of number of uh, crop burning locations that are captured in a 16-day window period. Okay, so uh, you can see about hundreds, if not thousands, of places in the northern regions, agricultural fields. This uh, crop residue burning is happening, and if you look at the scenario of Punjab. A major portion of this crop residue especially comes from wheat crop residue, about 81 percentage of wheat crop residues are being burned and 48 percentage of rice crop residues are being burnt in the open fields, right? So and here is a picture of uh, the heaps of biochar that are actually lying in the agricultural fields after this crop burning process. Okay, so uh, as I already mentioned, these are actually millions of 
kilograms of biochar that is actually in lying in the agricultural fields. And uh, to be noted is, what is to be noted is, this char has a huge surface area when compared to the soil, and they have a very good sorption potential, and they can absorb the pesticides that are being used in the, the next season, wherein uh, the sowing and the harvesting is, uh, raising of the crops is going to happen. So that is essentially the focus of this talk. And here I'm actually showing the in, uh, picture of Rupnagar, especially uh, villages associated with Rupnagar, where the after the burning of the crop residues, the fields, and we have taken a, a picture of that, uh, that's nearby region. And as I already mentioned, this is not just a regional issue, this is a global issue. And this is happening in almost uh, uh, all the countries wherever agriculture is being practiced. And it's uh, it's an age, age old phenomena, right? And then, and it has got both the both the views. Some uh, some think that this results in recycling of nutrients that can happen by burning and having the char in the agricultural field can provide nutrients to the soil. But it has a contrary effect also, as uh, as we are going to see what happens when pesticides react to this uh, highly carbonaceous high surface area matter. Okay, so essentially that is what I'm going to talk about, impact of this crop residue char on contaminant transport processes. Okay, uh, when we look at the Punjab scenario and the amount of pesticide that is being used, as we know, this is an agrarian uh, region, right? Although we have a very uh, small amount of uh, area, uh, about 1.5 percentage of the land area of the country, we are actually consuming 17 percentage of uh, total pesticides that is consumed annually. All right, so that is actually five, around 5,000 5, to 6,000 tons of uh, pesticides per year. Okay, that is a huge amount. And essentially, if you look at within Punjab, where this most of it goes to is the Malwa region. And we know that uh, lots of health issues are there. Then uh, the groundwater pollution in Malwa region is, uh, is huge, and, and uh, lots of problems are to be uh, needs technological solutions or even uh, a comprehensive understanding if is still lacking in many many cases okay so um, essentially i'm going to present you a case study actually this is uh, done and during my graduate studies uh, of course uh, the results of this is applicable to the scenario here okay so these are the soils in the arkansas state of us and the pesticide that we used for these studies are um, actually atrazine one of the top pesticides uh, pesticide used in the us Okay, so the goal of the study is to see how this crop residue uh, derived char is going to affect the adsorption and desorption process of pesticides in soils. And also, not only that, it can affect the bioavailability, the ability of microbes to degrade this contaminant. How it is going to affect the biodegradation potential of uh, microorganisms, of uh, microorganisms uh, of the selected pesticide. Okay. Um, and one outstanding question in um, in this area is what happens to the adsorbed chemicals, whether adsorbed chemicals can be biodegraded or only aqueous phase chemicals are available for biodegradation. So that question is also uh, the prime focus of this study. So the soil that we used is actually um, uh, acronymed as HS. It's uh, classified as hard cells soil and its characteristics are provided here. It has an organic carbon of 1.29. Uh, uh, which is a low amount of organic carbon and a pH of around 5.3 and the textural classification uh, indicates it's predominantly having um, uh, relatively coarser sandy sandy loam and the clay fraction is uh, relatively less. Okay, on the right I'm showing the wheat chart uh, under 500 uh, times magnification um, and these are essentially the uh, crop residues we collected from uh, crop residues of the wheat uh, and that are actually burnt in a stainless steel plate and the char obtained uh, therefore is actually uh, shown uh, taken the scanning electro electron micrograph picture okay and as already mentioned the pesticide that we chose was um, this atrazine which is one of the heavily used pesticide um, in the united states and uh, lots of reports are there that this atrazine finds its place uh, finds its concentrations uh, higher than the prescribed limit in drinking water as well. So it is one of the contaminant of concern. And some of the characteristics of uh, this pesticide is also given, uh, like the water solubility of it, it has a moderate water solubility, 
and its absorption to organic carbon mentioned by log koc is around uh, 1.95 to 2.71 and for this study we have used both uh, radio labeled radio labeled and non radio labeled chemical um, so okay. and the lipid scintillation counting is for this study and uh, as far as the microorganisms for the biodegradation uh, studies bioassay is concerned uh, pseudomonas species adp strain was used which is a gram negative bacterium and this bacteria can essentially uses the nitrogen in the atrosin uh, for uh, as its nutrient okay and uh, as well in this study carbon also comes from this atrosin only and uh, it has been shown that this particular strain can cleave the atrosin as in drink Okay. So uh, next, moving on to the experimental. Actually, uh, uh, the experiments involve three different sets of experiments. Actually, that are highlighted in red on the right side of your screen. Actually, we have conducted sorption and desorption equilibrium studies, batch studies, and uh, kinetic desorption studies and bioavailability studies. Okay. So if you look at the entire mechanism that happens, right, and then in when soil and this pesticide is mixed. Essentially, the composition of the soil is going to dictate the amount of absorption, right? So, based on the composition of the soil, one can find what is the mechanism of absorption. It is going to affect the the way in which the chemical is going to absorb, and the mechanism is going to influence the strength of absorption, right? And that is, if the strength of absorption is more, the desorption rate is going to be less. And the strength of absorption is less, the desorption rate is going to be more. And if so, if, an, if a solute can desorb at a higher rate, it is highly bio, highly bioavailable, and it actually it's directly related to the bioavailability also. So that is essentially what uh, these studies are aimed at: looking at the sorbent composition to estimating the bioavailability. So let me move on to the results of, of the batch isotherm studies. So, given a total uh, concentration the, of contaminant, the pesticide, it's going to partition between aqueous phase and the soft phase. That is essentially captured through this isotherm. Okay, the blue line indicates the soft isotherm. As aqueous phase concentration varies, what is the amount of option of pesticide is happening to the soil? Okay, and uh, the brown and brown triangles and the brown line fitted actually indicates of the desorption process. So as you can see, the sorption and the desorption process, desorption lines are not matching, resulting in showing that there is a hysteric phenomena that is happening. Okay, so, so there is some audio disturbance. Yeah. So uh, actually, uh, the sorption isotherms are fitted using uh, a nonlinear isotherm called phenolic isotherm. The parameters are provided at the bottom. Okay, so as you can see, Kf represents the phenolic absorption constant, and it is 1.49. And the n is phenolic uh, constant n essentially indicates it's almost a linear option that is happening. As you can see, the desorption line is actually more than the absorption indicating that is hysteresis. And uh, if we actually add about one percentage of tar to the soil, actually you can see the adsorption profiles here actually. So uh, if you look at the KF values after addition of char to the soil, one percentage of char on a weight basis, you have a huge amount of increase in adsorption, right? So going back to the previous slide, you have 1.5 KF, that is actually 7.5 now, right? And also it increases the nonlinearity of adsorption also. Right, is a 0.72 actually. The isotherm addition of char to soil essentially increases the huge increases absorption to a tremendous level. Okay, just the char alone and use the atrazine for adsorption. You have uh, about three orders of magnitude higher adsorption than what is happening in soil, right? And then you have a strongly constant of two, around 1000 actually so which indicates the char alone has a huge potential of absorbing this pesticide okay so moving on to the bioavailability studies um, so on the left you have just the degradation of atrazine happening in this uh, 
just the liquid phase and on the right you have degradation of hydrogen happening in this it can be uh, either uh, soil slurry or soil with char or just char alone slurries okay um, and in the bottom i have provided the extent of degradation maximum degradation extent along with the rate of degradation uh, the k values as you can see in just the aqueous phase degradation the char is around 79.14 percentage of hydrogen has been degraded and that also has a higher rate of degradation as well but the, the scenario changes when you have the slurries or solid in the system right and then when compared to the soil uh, the pmax 69.38 even you have in the char slurries you have 48.65 the degradation has been reduced more than 20% and when you compare with just the soil amended with char you have uh, 57.61 about 11 percentage of um, atrazine is actually uh, is less okay it's still not been degraded so essentially the presence of char in soil reduces the biodegradation of pesticides right that's the take home message here and if you look at the constants the degradation constants the char system the char slurry system has the lowest degradation rate constant showing the indicating that the amount of the strength of sorption in char alone systems uh, is is really high resulting in lower amount of degradation lower rate of degradation okay so if so here is a cartoon of the various processes that governs the contaminant transport in the subsurface right and then on the left um so the green ones light green ones are actually uh, i have tried to draw the bacterium so that is the bacterium and the yellow ones are the pesticides actually in aqueous phase that is essentially what the microbes degrading the pesticide is what i am depicting and if you are looking at but that is not the system right subsurface has soil also in there so on the right you have the brown representing soil and soil is not homogeneous it has we are adding char the black ones and this pesticide can absorb to this char right and also the bacterium can degrade the aqueous phase contaminant and also whether the sap contaminant onto the soil whether they can be de uh, degraded or not that is still a question right so how do we decipher it it's really a complex scenario here so that is where we have to uh, we went for a model that is called uh, desorption biodegradation and mineralization model so directly uh, and, uh, like looking for a degradation in a soil system is highly impractical or impossible so we have to go for some mathematical modeling to capture that so here uh, we are using this dbm model wherein we conceptualize the soil has a three compartment so which is called as equilibrium non equilibrium and non desorption compartments okay so that is represented by feq fneq and fnd here okay so all these three fractions add up to one and the amount of sorption that is happening to these three fractions are actually captured as seq sneq and snd okay as the name itself indicates seq is the amount of sorption that is instantaneous okay that represents the fraction in the soil or the solvent that can absorb and desorb instantaneously whereas neq is a non equilibrium fraction that can that has a kinetic limitation in absorption and desorption and snd is a non desorption fraction anything that is absorbed by this fraction of soil or the absorbent is not going to be uh, uh, released it's not going to be desorbed or is not available for degradation okay so essentially snd can be thought of as the hysteretic fraction of the soil okay which is essentially non desorb so uh, here we are actually relating that to the fronlick forms seq is related to feq and the fronlick form of absorption and the uh, rate of uh, release of contaminant or the pesticide from the non equilibrium fraction is related to what is expected to be absorbed in non equilibrium fraction and what is essentially absorbed related by uh, an alpha that's the rate of uh, desorption factor and non desorption is fnd by the fronlick absorption parameter where ce represents equilibrium absorption that is happening okay so uh, if you look at the conceptual picture of dbm this is what we are trying to capture actually given a total concentration of the chemical the pesticide here so we have a certain amount the total sorption is absorption is s that is related to the fronlick form and feq absorbs a fraction of equilibrium that that's present in the absorbent and if neq i have already described this is a kinetically limited sorption desorption fraction and snd is 
the non-desorbed or hysteretic phase which is not available for degradation. And uh, this model assumes only aqueous phase chemical and chemical that is essentially desorbed from a non-equilibrium fraction being degraded by uh, constant uh, for aqueous phase degradation constant K1. And essentially the biodegradation aqueous phase is happening at that rate. And uh, you have this mineralization of the degradation related by the Pmax constant. Okay, so that percentage of carbon dioxide is what we are actually tracking for the amount of degradation. So going to the model assumptions, um, as I already mentioned, there are three types of sorption sites that are available in the adsorbent: equilibrium, non-equilibrium, and non-desorption sites. And uh, as we have seen demonstrated in these option experiments, the isotherms follow a non-linear Fronlich type pattern. So that is applicable. And uh, what we are trying to do is we are trying to simulate or predict the degradation that can happen just by the aqueous phase degradation constants. And see if at all just the aqueous phase degradation can match with the slurry based degradation. Okay. So essentially with the assumption, third assumption, assumption here is so desorption parameters that we are getting from abiotic experiments are valid for biodegradation as is and the mineralization rate parameters for soil free solutions are the same as those in slurry solutions okay and essentially we are predicting the degradation of uh, soil free solutions and see if that, if that matches with the slurry phase okay and uh, the assumption here is both the, the cells that are attached to the soil and that are present in the liquid phase can only degrade liquid phase uh, pesticide or liquid phase sorbate. Okay, so uh, so those all those reactions are related to the mass balance equations and solved in a sequential fraction uh, um, sequential manner. So the VL is the volume of the liquid and the rate of concentration in liquid phase and WS is the mass of uh, weight of soil and the DS, rep DS represents rate of so solid phase absorption changes in solid phase concentration. And uh, R-bio is a biodegradation that is happening related to uh, the aqueous phase concentration, the first order degradation that is happening related by K1, uh, the first order mineralization rate constant. So on D DP is essentially DPCO2 is the yield of carbon dioxide that is happening related by the yield coefficient of YCO2 to R-bio. Okay. So uh, essentially once we solve this, uh, Hello. Hello. Hey, Dr. Vijay, you are not audible. Hello. 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 Dr. Vijay. Hello. Hello, Dr. Vijay. Hello. Dr. Vijay, you are not audible. Your slides are also not visible. Can you please re reload your slides?
Hello. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, is it all right now? It's okay. You can load your slides. You got disconnected. Hello. Your presentation is not visible. Is it okay? Yeah, is it okay now? Yeah. Yes, okay. Yeah. So from where should I start from? And then uh, I, I don't know where. The, I got disconnected. Can you go back? Can you go back one slide? Yeah, you can start from here. Okay, okay. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, so essentially, we are, we have seen, uh, probably I can go back uh, uh, one more slide. Essentially, we are looking at char amended with soil systems where there is a huge increase in soil uh, hydrogen adsorption, right? So when you look at char alone system, uh, here is a potential of char, which adsorbs about three orders of magnitude more amount of hydrogen when compared to just soil alone adsorption, right? So that's a huge amount of adsorption that is happening in uh, char, um, hydrogen to char. Okay, so here are the results of the bioavailability as is. Um, so the on the left we have the sorbent extracts which has no sorbent in it, just the extracts of soil so, soil amended with char and char alone systems, and on the right we have the slurries uh, which is which contains the soil media as well, sorbent media as well. Okay, uh, so if we on the bottom we have the amount of degradation that's Pmax that is happening in these three systems, uh, as as you can see. The char system has the uh, maximum amount of degradation that's happening uh, with highest amount of degradation rate as well. But if you're looking at the slurry systems, as uh, as we have the char in the system, the soil, soil with char amended systems have got a, about 11 percentage reduction in degradation. And char alone system, has, since it absorbs more, the amount of degradation has reduced considerably more than 20 percentage reduction in degradation. And not only that, the rate of degradation also decreases with the presence of char in the in the slurries, right? So the least is with the char slurry having 0 0.0059 as the rate of degradation. Okay, uh, so and here I'm presenting the, the cartoon of what's happening in the subsurface when the degradation processes are happening. So the green ones are the microorganisms and the LO is actually the pesticide, right? So essentially, the aqueous phase the degradation of pesticide happens, but the system complicates is get gets complicated when you have soil in the system, right? Soil is not uh, really homogeneous; it, it it got uh, char in it and and whatnot actually. So uh, not only uh, it is it has got uh, silty material, clay material, and uh, mineralogy is highly heterogeneous. Right, so and also not only that, the pesticide adsorbs to soil, and also you have in the groundwater system uh, pesticides are in the aqueous phase as well. But trying to understand just the salt phase chemical degradation alone, evidence for that is is really lacking. So there is no direct evidence that shows adsorbed chemicals or can be degraded. Okay, so essentially that's where we have to go for a numerical way of understanding the scenario. So we will be using a numerical model. Um, it's called desorption, biodegradation, and mineralization model that's developed by PARP. So here, the, so the sorbent, sorbent is actually conceptualized into three different phases, right? FEQ, FNEQ, and FND. So FEQ represents the equilibrium fraction, and FNEQ represents the non-equilibrium fraction, and FND represents 
the non desorption fraction so the non desorption fraction is can be uh, thought of as the hysteretic causing to be desorbed okay so whereas a non equilibrium fraction is related to the amount of fraction that is amount of sorbent that is absorbed to this fraction uh, but has a kinetic limitation in desorbing that is that is related to this alpha parameter okay and feq is a equilibrium fraction which has instantaneous absorption and instantaneous desorption okay um, so in all these three fractions add up to one the total amount of absorption is sorption that's happening in equilibrium non equilibrium and non desorption fractions okay essentially uh, so here is a conceptual picture of this dbm model so given a total amount of uh, total concentration of chemical pesticide here so it is actually going to partition between solid phase and the liquid phase through this through this uh, related by this front uh, isotherm uh, parameters right so and that is essentially divided into these three phases fraction equilibrium related by the front uh, equation and fneq is a rate limited sorption desorption that is related by this alpha parameter and the amount that is expected to be absorbed at this option in non equilibrium fraction given by this gradient essentially and snd is non desorption fraction so the aqueous phase chemical and chemical that is desorbed from this non equilibrium fraction will be degraded at so later by this first order degradation rate constant that's k1 okay and uh, the amount that it can be mineralized into carbon dioxide is related by this yield coefficient that is t max okay so the assumptions of the model are essentially i already mentioned three types of absorption sites are present in the absorbent equilibrium non equilibrium and non desorption and uh, we have already seen the non linear isotherm front leak model can explain absorption in these systems uh, and uh, so the these are the three different site parameters are obtained from this desorption uh, experiment the desorption uh, can profiles which i will present to you in the next slide okay and uh, the mineralization rate parameter are actually come from soil free from soil free solutions so based on the match that we obtain we are going to make some conclusions whether absorbed phase can already may assume both suspended and attached cells can utilize only liquid phase absorbed and uh, uh, the equations that i mentioned meter here right so through the front leak um, uh, equations and dc here uh, dc by d is the rate of concentration in the liquid phase and r by o is the rate of degradation that is happening in the aqueous phase and uh, the yield of carbon dioxide is related by the p max parameter that's already been explained so um, as already mentioned these are kinetic desorption profiles for soil soil with char and char alone systems as you can see there is a each of this profile has got an instantaneous release right and then um, if you look at let's say the pink line so you have around uh, near to 20 percentage of instantaneous desorption that is happening and it plateaus at around 55 percent 55 to 60 percentage is where it plateaus so until then is the kinetic desorption that is the fraction of kinetic desorption and beyond that there is no desorption that is happening until 100 that's going to be the non desorption fraction that is present in the soil so we estimated this fractions from the desorption profiles and also the kinetic of release is also obtained from the from these profiles and uh, so essentially these parameters are fed into the dbm model actually uh, so how to interpret this this data is provided on the right actually so if the prediction line it's a solid black line if it fits the experimental parameters the experimental data that is essentially the black circles it actually says that the only aqueous phase degradation is aqueous phase atrazine is mineralized okay but if the dbm prediction line if if it falls below the data points indicate at the uh, degradation in the absorbed phase also happening is also happening but whereas if the data points are below the line which that indicates even aqueous phase degradation is limited is inhibited okay so uh, so looking at the degradation in the soil the hartzell soil we can see 
there is a vandalization that is happening beyond what is expected from the slurry phase so there is a soft phase degradation that is actually uh, uh, indicated by this prediction okay if you look at soil plus char 1% char even here we see the data points the solid black dots that's staying above the prediction line the degradation uh, the solid black line indicating there is soft phase degradation in soil and soil laminate char systems whereas if you are looking at uh, the char alone system so the prediction line exactly matches the the experimental data points indicating absorption in the of the soft phase uh, degradation of the soft phase chemical is is not happening in char alone systems so essentially uh, leading to uh, the summary of this study essentially is addition of char, char, char to the soil increased the sorption parameters increased the non linearity of absorption and uh, as we can see the amount of sorption in char is way high when compared to the soil about 800 to 3800 times more when compared to the soil and the char alone uh, char presence in the soil can alter the desorption also as we can see the sorption desorption parameters uh are are really uh totally different when char is present in the soil and we're looking at the bio degradation studies we can see that when compared to the soil systems the char amended with soil showed about 11 percentage lesser co2 yield lesser degradation and char alone system had 20 percent lesser carbon dioxide production like indicating that the chemicals are absorbed to the the sorbents char or uh, char plus soil and essentially that can release over time and degradation is essentially limited because of that and uh, the dbm model actually indicated soft phase degradation happening in soil and soil plus char system but not in char alone system so essentially this study actually has uh, an implication that stubble burning is not just limited to air pollution alone right so it can impact the agricultural fields and the transport of contaminants in the subsurface and it's the pollution is not just limited to the sky it's 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 beyond that and we have to look at the the full picture yeah so that's essentially what uh wanted to present and i would be uh, thanks thanks for your attention and be glad to take any questions if you may have well that was really a wonderful talk about uh, you know how stable burning can impact not only environment but it can also impact many other uh, aspects of life including agriculture so it can right, yeah. affect the uh, yield of of uh, agricultural products and many other things so now this is open for uh, question answers uh, can i ask question yeah definitely yeah please yeah Hi, uh, this is good. Uh, I'm Manoranjan Misra here. Oh, hello, hello, hello. Welcome, hello. welcome to India. Welcome hello. back to India. I'm back and I'm in a hotel now. Okay, so uh, uh, which is was I? I could not attend the. Okay, yeah, yeah, please, yeah. Sir. Oh, okay. So we have some connection issues as well. Yeah, please. Yeah, go ahead. So, uh, so yeah, I guess. I could not attend the yes, past. Dr. Mishra, yeah. I could not attend some of the past I missed. Mm -hmm. So uh, I have a few questions. Uh, it's very interesting. So if you go to slide number 20, 2021 around. Yeah. Yes. So this okay. This this is okay, fine. So I would like to say, I would like to know. Uh, why do you choose uh, Fredlich absorption? What motivated uh, you? You think that Fredlich is the much better? So not better. Actually, we have tested the. So I can go. So since probably isotherms, you might have missed actually. So we we have developed the isotherms and found that Fredlich isotherm could explain the data well. I see. So these are the fittings of the problem. So this is from the soil alone data, okay. right? So the KF and N and uh, the coefficient of correlation is uh, the correlation is also factor is also given. So, but is so it, essentially, the is it thinking about Fredlich? Uh yes, Dr. Mishra, please, yeah. 
Yeah, is it the fitting which is Fred Lewis, the parameter N and KF? Yes, yes. KF and N are the only parameters, yes. I see. So this is for the soil 11 system and this works for, can capture the non-linearity in this char soil amended with char system and it can work for the char alone system as well. So, so it is not a linear option. It, it might be easier to go with the linear, but it's linear is not going to work. Yeah, yeah. That is very clear. That is very clear. Yes. But yes. you have shown that R square effect is very, very close to one with K, F and mm. N. That is much better. Mm. I agree. Yes. Okay. okay. When you go to DBM model. Okay. Yeah. So let's go to DBM model. So how this model, because is it the best model? How can we say that this will be the best? Because you have the uh, adjustment uh, mass transfer system in the left side and you have some kind of a reaction system in the right side. Right. In the DBM equation. So this is, yeah, this is one of the models I would say. This, this is not the only model, but this is essentially can explain the biodegradation process, right? And then so, uh, so if you look at the model assumptions, so essentially it uses three different types of sorption sites, mm -hmm. right? And those three are already mentioned and the kinetic desorption profiles essentially captures that, right? So there is an initial equilibrium fraction, right? And then so if you take the pink line here. So there is an equilibrium fraction that we can directly get that's instantaneous absorption. And the desorption happens for a certain time and it's not everything is desorbed, right? So it is limited at around, let's say, around 55 to 60%, right? And there is a hysteretic fraction that is not desorbed at all. Mm -hmm. So essentially this model can capture these three different phases that are present in the absorb, the sorbent. Yeah. Right, so it is just a mechanistic model. One of the ways in which we can conceptualize the the desorption process. Yeah, go back to the uh, slide, please. We just if I take some one minute. Yeah, in the equation, no, 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 no. the equation, the equation, equation, the mass balance. Yeah. Yes. So mass balance, the right side equation is a reaction term, right? Right. So we allow for you is the reaction term. Yes. Yeah, very simple reaction. Just just a linear first order reaction you are putting. Yeah, it's just a first order reaction. Yes. Yeah. Because so, but that is what we have observed in uh, in our slurry system, right? And then, if you look at yeah, I'll go to the slurry. Uh, that is that will be here. So essentially, if you look at the sorbent extracts, this is just a first order degradation, right? Okay. okay, okay. Right. On the left, you have sorbent extract. This degradation is just first order. Okay. Because I feel so, and we have tested with different concentration yeah. values. I feel that is it yes. good to see because there are so many other components, as you know, in the in the in the system, mm -hmm. like in your, in your agriculture field, there will be many other component of the chemical components. So, is it good to check of each component mm -hmm. uh, reaction uh, mechanism? Right, so there we can include an inhibition factor and we can go for a monotype also, but essentially that is not uh, demanded by this system, right? And then so it, it is system specific. So what we observe here is a uh, first order kinetic degradation is essentially uh, is working for this. We have tested that with two different concentrations also. So that's been, that is part of this, that's all done in the study as well. So, yeah. So, but, but yeah, yes, as things system get complex, we might have to go for different, uh, uh, yeah, a different model that is, yeah, it is system specific, yes. Yes, uh, in this kind of uh, system, because of the, com like when pollutants, like you are looking the adjustment desorption with a chemical component. So the chemical component, uh, each chemical component uh, that can depend on the, uh, like this adsorption can analyze, it can depend on the analytes. Uh, mm -hmm. This K, 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 KF, K for K1 or KFC, whatever that uh, adsorption digestion rate constant you are taking. Like, right. So that could depend on itself with the chemical component. Is it possible? Sure, sure. Yeah, this is very specific to this particular chemical atrazine. Yes. I see. Okay. okay. Yeah, this I is very specific to this particular chemical. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So if you are changing the pesticide, this is, uh, we have to derive it for that particular system. Yes. But do you see 
do you, I'm, I'm just curious. Do you see that there are some possibility of this scape or the adsorption desorption rate constant can depend on the component of the <laughs> chemical involved? Hello, Dr. Yeah. Mishra. Yeah. Can you please repeat? And then there were some uh, audio issues. Yeah. Okay. So, do you expect? I'm just curious to know. Mm -hmm. Do you expect that this is possible that this rate constant of Kf you take Kf or power exponent n could okay. be depending on the chemical component involved? If there are two component involved in a uh, in a system. In a sure, system, yeah. is it possible that KF, because I could see some of my system, it depends. Mm -hmm. KF depends on the concentration. Yeah, it is very much, yeah. This KF and N are dependent on the sorbent and the absorbate. So it's very much dependent on the system. Okay. Right? And if we have, instead of heterosine, if we have, let's say, alachlor or uh, uh, endosulfan or some other pesticide, it will be totally different. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And of course, yeah. Yes, any? No. Other questions? Yes. Any more questions? So, what is the impact of uh, stubble burning on uh, beneficial microorganisms in the agricultural field, which help in? nitrogen fixation and uh, yeah. promote uh, efficiently growth of uh, crops? Uh, so I can, uh, with regard, so the stubble burning is not all negative, that is for sure. So it has got um, positive impact on agriculture and this is an age old practice, uh, Professor, as I already mentioned. So uh, it has been carried out since the BCs and uh, there is a phenomena called terra preta phenomena also. So that is um, in the Amazonian soil, there is a group of, uh, there's a society that practices this and still we have uh, the, the beneficial activities are, are uh, still visible there, actually. Um, so uh, what the essential, it's actually followed by the people that's practicing the agriculture for some beneficial activity, thinking that the soil nutrients from this residues can be recycled. Right. So, but in the modern age of using huge amount of pesticides in agriculture, that essentially can lead to all these negative impacts. Right. So that has to be seen as well. So as far as the microcosm, uh, the beneficial microcosm that is present uh, in the soil. Um, so there are evidences of positive impacts from the terra preta phenomena. So that is still, that is there actually. The crop burning has evidences of uh, a specific microcosm prevalence that can ha essentially happen through this biochar mixing with the soil. So that can lead to positive impacts as well. That cannot be uh, uh, neglected, yes, yeah. yeah. So any more questions? So in case if really you have some questions too, you can write to Dr. Vijayanand. You can email him. So okay. let us give him a big applause. So a very good lecture. So thank you very much, uh, Dr. Vijayanand, for a wonderful talk. Okay. And we wish you good luck with your work ahead. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for uh Give me an opportunity. Yeah. You know, thanks to all the participants. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah.